So I'm here with Elliot Connie, and Elliot is a star in the PLF world. He's now become a member of my highest end mastermind. He's an amazing person I've got to spend a lot of time with. He's been on this crazy journey mm. from being a psychotherapist of, of some considerable renown, yes. author, yep. but, but mostly a psychotherapist, a yep. very successful practice, to being someone who coaches, has a big coaching presence helping other psychotherapists become yeah. better psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. And now you're gone mainstream and you're about to be, start shooting a TV show, like, yeah. a, like a network show. And yeah. So what has this journey been like for you? What has it been like to broaden your audience? What do folks at home need to hear from you? I think, um, so what it's been like for me has been unbelievably surreal. Uh, like Jeff was saying, I started my journey just wanting to help people and wanting to do that through mental health work as a psychotherapist. And I'll never forget, my first ambition was I wanted to start a private practice. And this is before Zoom and online therapy. And I bought, I got an office in a place called Keller, Texas. And I expected to really feel satisfied. And like, then I realized the only people I could help are the people who can get to my office. So the people who are in a driving distance. And I was unsatisfied with that. I wanted to reach more people. So I wrote books to reach wider audiences and I realized I could only help people that bought my books. And then I wanted to speak and I, and I would go out on the road and I could only help people that were um, able to attend my events. And I realized through that process that if you're gonna run a business, it's not really about money, it's about impact. It's about the people you can reach and the people you can touch. And money is a secondary consequence of that. The biggest reason that I've been able to expand my audience to such a degree and be able to generate seven figures a year is because I focus on people that I can impact. And once you're making impact, you're also making money. Once you're reaching people, you're also making money. Because every time I expanded my audience, it wasn't really, oh, I want to expand my audience to make money. I didn't, I didn't want to just help people in Keller, Texas. And I didn't want to just help people who can write my books. I wanted to help people who were in pain and who were struggling, regardless of where they were or the circumstances with which they were in and they found me. So the number one lesson I learned is like, you have to courageously accept your calling and everybody in your world, something has called them to do the thing that they do. And I think money is a great distraction from calling because then we start making decisions about how much money we can make and conversion rates and, and all that stuff. When really, if you just focus on service, I think business is another word for service. If you focus on service and you provide value, the money kind of takes care of itself. And what you'll accidentally be doing is building an audience of people that view you as someone who could meet their needs. And oftentimes in the most precious times, like when people were coming to talk to me, it was like, I don't think I can go on anymore. Like something stressful has happened or something difficult has happened, I'm really struggling. And the more I showed up for those people in a quality way, the more they respected me and the more they would come and talk to me. And not coincidentally, I started getting opportunities simply because of that. So I would say the number one lesson I've learned in this whole process is to really understand your business is about impact. Your business is about the work that you do and how you show up in service. And when you do that, you're going to be building an audience of people that will buy anything you offer them, not because you're good at sales, but because you're good at meeting their need. You're good at talking to their heart. You're good at servicing them as a human being. And that's really when this becomes fun. And that's really when this becomes amazing. You know, and, and Jeff mentioned, I have a TV project coming up. And it's not just a TV project. It's not like, oh, I'm going to be casted on Saturday Night Live or I'm going to be on the, this, the Seinfeld new show or whatever, whatever it is. I'm going to be doing a show that's like of service. The shows that we're making are mental health driven and they're going to be on network television um, servicing people. So it's on my mission. And that's the most amazing thing to me is I get to talk to the whole world about mental health. I get to talk to communities that otherwise haven't had conversation about mental health from someone that looks like them, talks like them, dresses like them, and it's surreal. It's amazing to know that this launch world just put me in a path where I'm just doing the same things I've always been doing, just to an ever-expanding brand, an ever-expanding amount of people. So Jeff is gonna talk to you, if you guys are in Jeff's world, He's, he does all these things and he shows you how to make sales and make conversions and do launches and all of that is valuable. But the, my favorite thing about Jeff is if you, if you listen to him, he's actually talking about how to reach people and how to impact people's lives and impact people's heart. And the secondary consequence of that is wealth.
some of the wealthiest people I know, and I now know really, really wealthy people, um, they got wealthy because they did something they loved really, really well in service of people that they love. So that's the best lesson is, is run your business from your heart, run your business with love, and never lose track of this isn't really about money. It's about service and people's hearts, and that's how you attract money into your world. Um, I have a podcast that's coming out, if you're watching this video shortly after we recorded it, it's coming out on April 17th. It's called uh, Family Therapy, presented by The Black Effect, and it's with iHeartRadio, and you guys can go check it out. But it's, again, it's not just a podcast. It's a podcast about mental health, where I'm going to show people what the therapy community looks like and what therapy looks like. And um, you're going to see a family go through change. It's going to inspire you, because um, that's my brand. And maybe your brand is uh, you do art, and you really want people to get more creative. But that really unlocks some magic in the people that you're serving. So just never, ever lose sight that what you're doing is actually servicing people and showing up for them, and that's how you get wealthy. The wealthiest people I know, including this guy, um, they, they run their business with a smile on his face. Like, if you ever see Jeff, he's smiling, and we were just having a conversation about how your team doesn't work themselves to death. Why is that? Because he, he views himself in service of his community, which I'm a member of, of his team, which he's in service of his team, and, and of the people that he is servicing. So um, don't lose that lesson. It's so easy to get distracted by money and cars and jewelry, but it's never about any of that stuff. It's about service, and it's about the people that you're working so hard to impact. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Connie, TV show coming up, podcast coming up, and just hugely uh, impactful member of the community. And I, I will say this. I will say this. And Jeff doesn't know I'm going to He didn't know I was going to say any of this, but he doesn't know I'm going to say this, too. Um, I owe just about everything I've ever done to this guy in business. Now, when I met him, I was already a world-renowned psychotherapist, but I was just thinking about who I wanted to be. And I had a conversation with Jeff about this in Denver in 20, 20, 2021. Yeah, 2021. It was in June of 2021. And I was, I was just trying to figure out who I want to be in the next chapter of my life. And the best thing you can do for yourself is like, Look for your talent that you may not have recognized in yourself. Like, really honor it and look in your talent. And Jeff looked at me, and he said, you've got a talent. You're very good on the stage. And I remember being like, no one's ever said that to me before. Now, granted, I'd been taking psychotherapy stages for a really long time at that point, and I knew people liked my lectures, but they would say, like, we like your content, we like it. But no one had really said, we like the way you do that. And when he said it, it really pushed me to look at myself, like, what are my talents and my gifts? And uh, a month later is when I, when I got offered my first TV contract and, <laughs> and life has unfolded since then. So stay in Jeff's world and, and surround yourself with people like him. I, I tell people all the time, like, everybody needs a friend like Jeff because he's able to look at you and tell you something amazing about you that you might not have known was there, and it completely changed my life. So I love this guy for that, and I want you guys to all pay attention, love yourself, love your audience, and you'll get wealthy. <laughs> and uh, I'm Jeff Walker. This is Elliot <laughs> Connie. Do you know my tagline? Yeah. And Hold on. Uh, go get him this week. There you go. <laughs>